Hello everybody, this is your professor at TVE course, Alex Voss, and we're bringing our first class on Faraday's Law of Induction. Basically, we're talking about how magnets produce electricity. Magnetic fields and electric fields or electricity interact, and they're, they're, they're related. And Faraday brought his law forward that showed that. Whenever we have electrons in motion, they have a magnetic field around them. Whenever a magnetic field is in motion and it goes by a conductor, it will cause electrons to move. This interaction is the basis of generators, motors, and many other types of electrical devices. And uh, I have a great uh, public domain film produced by the U.S. Air Force that talks about this relationship. And it does an excellent job of expanding on Faraday's law. And so let's go to the film now. Hope you enjoy it and learn a lot from it. Thank you. Because of the relatively small phase difference developed by this method, shaded pole motors start slowly and are not used where a great deal of starting torque is required. There is another way to start the single phase induction motor. In addition to the main poles, starting poles with separate windings are used. Phase difference is created by using high resistance wires for the starting poles and low resistance wires for the main poles. To understand the operation of the starter winding, it is necessary to bear in mind something of the character of the AC power supply. In any pure inductance, current lags behind voltage by 90 degrees. But since the heavy winding is not a pure inductance, but a large inductance, the current will lag the voltage in this winding by less than 90 degrees, say 80 degrees. The greater resistance of the starter winding, because of its smaller diameter, causes the current to lag the voltage by much less than 90 degrees, say 30 degrees. The net effect is then that the greater resistance of the starter windings causes the phase shift to be less than that of the main winding. We now have in effect a two-phase current. The phase difference causes the starter windings to be energized before the main windings. Magnetic fields are formed progressively. This is called a split phase motor. The magnetic field now rotates electrically. The basic requirement of relative motion has been satisfied and the motor has been started. When the rotor has attained approximately 25% of its rated speed, a centrifugal switch opens and disconnects the starter windings. The phase shift accomplished by the addition of starter windings is not very great. The starting torque in this split phase arrangement, although better than that in the shaded pole motor, is still not too good. A third method for starting single phase induction motors is the use of starter windings with high capacity electrolytic capacitors. We saw in our last example how a phase difference was developed by the use of starter windings. Now when a capacitor is added in series with a starter winding, it offsets the inductance, causing an even greater phase shift between the two currents. This is a capacitor start motor with a centrifugal switch. When the motor has attained 25% of its running speed, the centrifugal switch disconnects the starter windings. The centrifugal switch is mounted on the rotor shaft and is the type used on most split phase motors. Since the greatest phase shift and relative motion is caused by the capacitor start method, it is used in situations where good starting torque is an important consideration. Among the principal types of AC motors in use, the synchronous motor is used in situations where constant running speed is the governing factor.
You'll remember that the operation of the induction motor depended on relative motion, that is, the difference in speed between the rotor and the rotating magnetic field. This relative motion induced an EMF in the rotor. In the synchronous motor, however, a different situation exists. Here, a multiphase source of AC is applied to the stator windings, producing a rotating field. And a separate DC voltage is applied to the rotor windings, producing an independent magnetic field. There is no need for relative motion here. The synchronous motor is so designed that the rotor and the field rotate at the same speed. This is of importance when synchronous motors are used to drive equipment requiring this characteristic. Now to summarize, all rotating generators produce AC internally. The AC character of the output is maintained in the AC generator by the use of slip rings as load connectors. The frequency of the AC generator can be changed by introducing additional magnetic fields. The formula for frequency can be expressed as follows. F, or frequency in cycles per second, equals P, the number of poles, times N, revolutions per minute, over 120. The simplest AC generator shown here is the single phase generator. This machine produces a single AC voltage. In the two phase generator, we find two loops 90 degrees apart. And in the three phase generator, three loops 120 degrees apart. The output of the three-phase generator, therefore, will be three AC voltages, 120 degrees out of phase. The field of an AC generator is always excited by a DC voltage, in this case by a small DC generator in tandem. When it comes to AC motors, the most commonly used is the induction motor whose basic operating principle is the electrical rotation of the magnetic field. Relative motion must be maintained. That is, the rotor must move at a slower pace than the rotating field. The three-phase induction motor is very efficient and widely used. The single-phase induction motor differs from the polyphase motors in that it is not self-starting. Since there is no phase difference in the single-phase current, the field pulsates instead of rotating. In order to create relative motion between field and rotor, shaded poles may be used. The unshaded portion is energized first. Because of the increased inductance in the shaded portion, the field here develops more slowly. Another method is the use of starter poles with high resistance windings. The high resistance in the starter winding causes the current to be out of phase with the current in the low resistance winding of the main pole. Magnetic fields are formed progressively and relative motion is begun. In the third method, a capacitor is placed in series with the starter winding. This causes a greater phase shift between the two windings. We now have two phase operation on single phase voltage. In synchronous motors, there is no need for relative motion. The EMF needed for the rotor is supplied from an outside DC source. Here, the rotor and the revolving field rotate at the same speed. AC rotating electrical equipment is the most practical for a multitude of uses. Knowledge of the principles of alternating current is essential to intelligent operation of such equipment. <laughs>